Everybody, welcome back to Ghostwood, the Twin Peaks podcast. I'm Charles Skaggs, your co-host on a rather chilly Thursday evening here in Columbus, Ohio. It's chilly. It's chilly, and I'm here, of course, with my other co-host, Zan Sprouse, sporting some new eyewear that's rather stylish. Thank and, you very and, much, and somewhat feline. It is. It's a little bit of a cat eye going on. It's, yeah. They're very similar to my previous glasses. They yeah. are black and pink Ray-Bans. They're just a little bit of a different style. But uh, very nice. They look good. Thank you very much. I'm glad they look even. Yes. So, <laughs> Symmetry they, is important. Yes. I just picked them up about two hours ago, so they they sort of feel different, but the same. Like how glasses always feel different, but the same right. when you get glasses. So if you hear any awkward pauses, you know, more than just my awkward pauses, uh, Zan's probably just trying to get used to her new glasses, her new frames. Yes. new. Well, they are in their new uh, prescription, too. So. Yeah, yeah. So fresh out of the box with uh, all the latest upgrades and all that joy, yep. all that jazz. So all that fun stuff. we're here to talk about Twin Peaks, of course, because, hey, we're a Twin Peaks podcast. Go figure. And uh, we're here at episode 49. We're going to talk about Drive with a Dead Girl. Yeah. So the second part of this, what I like to call the the Bob trilogy. That oh, started that started, la- started last time. I mean, because, you know, we had the revelation that mm-hmm. Bob was inside Leland Palmer and that he was the murderer of right. Laura Palmer. And now right. we get, now in this episode, we get to kind of see Leland knowing that Bob's inside him. Yeah, so we kind of got, so we kind of got get to see him being his rather dark malevolent self as Bob just enjoys mm-hmm. the ride and is pretty much taken full control at this point of Leela. Oh, Bob is so terrible. And he goes for a little drive in his convertible. Well, yes, so. a little bit of a drive in and, the... hence the title, Drive with a Dead Girl. Drive with a Dead Girl. I wonder who's going to be in the trunk. Yes. Well, yes, we know we know there's a golf club in the trunk. Yeah, there's golf clubs in the trunk, and, and there's a gym bag, rather large gym bag, like a body shaped gym bag, like a body shaped gym bag. Yeah, that's very, <laughs> very, very obvious. What's going on <laughs> in this situation? There is a man with the smiling bag. A smiling is that bag smiling? Yeah, you know, it's not really smiling. It's more zipped up, yeah. but <laughs> yeah, that's true. it is more of a zipped up bag. It's zipped up. There's a man with a zi- so... there's a man with a zipped up bag. There's a man with a zipped up gym bag. He just came from the gym. <laughs> yeah, and uh, you should had... probably be careful. He just came from Planet Fitness. Or <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it just it's so it's so sad how he really does just toy with Leland. Right. And that's kind of what one of the juicy things I love about this episode is that we get to see him just being so evil. And we kind of like, you know, he's really vamping it up for the audience. Yeah, this is a good episode of uh, Leland or Bob, frankly. Right, right. Although ten, pretty much it's like mostly Bob. At this it's point. pretty much mostly Bob, but it's it's definitely a good. Yeah. A good one for right. watching not- how. Ray Wise does it. And uh, yeah, because of course Ray Wise just kills it in this episode. He's so mm-hmm. good, so creepy. Oh. And, so uh, good, so creepy. And we see and how so good at going back and forth. And we see how much he, he puts on a front for everybody at this point. Oh yeah. Yeah. He is completely just trying he's just trying to be as normal as Bob can possibly be, but Bob is one of those guys that doesn't know how to be normal. He doesn't know how humans really are. Right. So he can't really do that very well. Yeah. And you see him trying to do Leland things. But. Right. Like but, he's, but, but, like but, he's but because of... he's so evil and demonic, it's just like, it's like, okay, what, what if a human or a demon decided to go for a joyride in a human's body and wackiness ensues? With the, with the dead body of his niece in the car. Exactly. Because, you know. As you do. We talked about that last week, so I don't feel bad about talking about it. No, no, it, no. But, it's, uh, and yeah. 
it's you know well hey it's like uh well gee only 28 year spoiler on that one yeah that's the thing after something you know after th- something's been out for at least five years, there's no such thing as a spoiler alert. That's that's on you. I, th- I think that statute of limitations is has expired. I think it is most definitely expired. I was just th- I, this this just occurred to me. You know what Bob kind of reminds me of? Who? The Hidden. Oh, Have you seen the movie The Hidden? Yeah, a long time ago, but yeah, yeah. With, I, yeah, uh, I see where you're going with that. With Kyle MacLachlan, right? Where he just uses the bodies till they're used up. Right. And they can't do anything with them anymore. Yeah, it feeds off of them and then discards yeah. them. Yeah. Right. So it's done. Once the body's done, then he gets he gets rid of it and finds another body to uh yeah. to get, you know, get into trouble, into intergalactic trouble in the uh sense of the hidden, of course. That's more of a intergalactic story. Spoiler alert, Kyle McLaughlin's an alien. <laughs> um but it's that it's that same concept where you know you're not quite sure what you do what the what the creature that has the body that you are in does right but that's what you're doing because you're you had, if you haven't seen the movie you haven't seen this creature before so it's all you're trying to figure what what its abilities are what it what its thing is what it's doing right right what is it you know how am i going to blend in yeah so in the case of the hidden so i can just you know steal cars and yeah. rob businesses and it's raison d'etre yeah just you're just general mayhem is what uh what you're trying to trying to go for whereas bob is like i need to somehow fit in with these humans so i can infiltrate yeah and, 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 and do what i got to do here so right and uh part of his plan is to basically kind of throw ben horn under the bus as we'll talk mm-hmm. about because is, you know I'm okay with that, frankly. <laughs> well, yeah, but you know the the fact is though, hey, he's the real murderer, and he's getting away with it by distracting everybody's attention on Ben. Yeah, that's the pro- the, the. I think what's weird about this is we know who the real killer is. Yeah, but we almost don't want them to be found out because we know that who's going to go to jail, Leland. Right. Bob's going to leave. Leland's going to go to jail. Leland is innocent in this as well. Right. Leland had no control over his body when this happened. So there's no way that he can take the blame for this. I mean, it's not like he just made bad choices and did the wrong. He didn't just get in with a bad crowd of kids or something like that. I mean, this is, this was not his idea. This was not what he wanted. And so, you know, that what's going to happen when Leland, well, We'll, we'll see. Spoiler alert, that's not going to happen. Yeah. <laughs> but you know that it's just going to be bad for Leland, too, and you don't want that. So you're almost like, I don't even know. That's the weird thing about this this case is that there is never going to be justice because it's supernatural. Right. You know, it, it's not and, like you can unless, unless you have, to jail. Yeah, unless you had Freddie McRubberfist handy. Yeah, you need... You're not going to get supernatural justice. To punch him back into the White Lodge. Right. And that's the only way it's going to happen. But so, yeah, it's it's very sad that it has to end the way it does. Yeah, but, uh, it's, it's very open ended. And although, you know, it it teases more. Well, yeah, but mm-hmm. it's that kind of like, well, I'll be back kind of, you know. Yeah. There's, you know, this, this... But a door time is but a window. I'll be back. <laughs> exactly. Nice. You know what that's from? All right, recite rec- rec- it one more time. Let's see if I can remember. Death is but a door. Time is but a window. I'll be back. It sounds familiar, but I'm stumped. What, what is it? It's the last words of Vigo the Carpathian. Oh. Ghostbusters 2. <laughs> he is Vigo. <laughs> yes, that's right. Ruler of Moldavia. Yeah. Why am I dripping with goo? Why am I dripping with goo? Yeah. Yep. <laughs> He's so good at that. I love, I love that line when he says that. Just the Why way am I dripping with goo? <laughs> yeah. Um, so this episode came out, as we talked about, 28 years ago on November 17th, 1990. Oh, my gosh. Written by Scott Frost, brother of Mark Frost. 
Hey, that's hey. always a... Uh, so, hooray for nepotism once again here on Twin hey, Peaks. You know, the Frost can do whatever they want, in my opinion. Yeah. Well, and what's also- interesting about this episode's credits is that they've, since we let the cat out of the bag last episode... Yeah. Piper Laurie is back in the credits as Tajimura and Catherine Martell. Yeah, she gets double billing now. Yes, she gets the double. They're just, they're just, they let it out of the bag, so now they're... Yeah, now they can actually be up up front about it. Yeah, and give give Piper Laurie her her credit. But, um, but yeah, Scott Frost, um, we've talked about what he's done a couple times here, because, of course, he wrote uh, Diane, the Twin Peaks tapes of Agent Cooper. Yes, he did. And he also wrote the uh, novel, the autobiography of FBI Special Agent Dale Cooper, My Life, My Tapes. The sadly no longer in canon. Right. But still very entertaining with his yeah, early could, childhood. Some of it can be in canon because some of it wasn't erased. So I would just take the bits that don't contradict the return. No, it's not that it was the return. It was that they were, he was setting it up that Wyndham Earl was more of a player in some things. Oh, okay. I see what you're saying. And right. Yeah. So I think the first, I think the first three fourths of it yeah. is fine. It's yeah. just when we start getting to Wyndham Earl, that's when we start going a little bit off the, yeah. So when, when off the rails with Canon, it always seems like, especially when you're, you're dealing with a TV show that you, the TV show is essentially like the main Canon. And then, yes. and then everything else, like novelization tie-ins or comic books, what have you, that falls into the category of, like, it's canon unless something in the TV show contradicts it. True. Exactly. Exactly. That's you the can, way I approach it. And... That's the way I approach canon anyway. Yeah, you can pick and choose yeah. from it. And obviously, some, you know, some things, if it just makes no sense whatsoever, you disregard it or um, – just that, uh, you know, some things you like, some things you don't. Everybody has their own idea of what's canon and what's not. So, Right. Well, the, the problem was is that as the show went on, um, Wyndham Earl was not what they were insinuating he was in that book. Yeah. So they, well, just, I don't, they hadn't really figured out what they wanted to do with the character yet. They had, right. They had a name and, you know, like a vague idea. Mm-hmm. But that's about but it. They, yeah, he he. They had him. They had some things credited to him that didn't exactly yeah. happen that way. So, as far as guest cast for this episode, um, we get the introduction of Jane Greer as Vivian Smythe Niles, mm. Norma's rather horrible mother. Do we find anything else out about her this episode? I don't remember if that's this episode. No, or not episode. this episode. Okay. But uh, we also get the introduction of James Booth as Ernie, the Professor Niles. Mm, God. The Professor. Uh, we get a quick little appearance by Kathleen Winhoit, Wilhoit as Gwen Morton, Lucy's sister, mm-hmm. who I became a fan of, not just because uh, on this show, but uh, she was on Gilmore Girls. She played a major recurring really? character on Gilmore Girls. Okay. Yeah, she played, um, she was Luke's sister on Gilmore Girls. Okay. I have if not you, seen... If you haven't watched Gilmore Girls, well then it's obviously in... Yeah, I haven't seen more than like three minutes of Gilmore Girls. Okay, so if you if you watch Gilmore Girls, you know Luke's sister, that's her. Okay. That makes sense. Because my wife and I we watched all of Gilmore Girls, so it almost uh, had me with when I found out that the father grandfather was Edward Herman. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, but it's just, it's a commitment, a time commitment that is like kind of down low on the list. <laughs> it's worth it. It's worth it. I, is it? Okay. Yeah. yeah. I, okay. I actually really like Gilmore Girls. I th- the dialogue is very sharp. Okay. So, uh, yeah, I, I liked it a lot and, um, great casting. It's a great ensemble cast. Nice. Yeah. And that's basically where, um, oh, what's her name? Uh, shoot. Uh, never mind. I can't remember her name, but. Okay. Yeah. That's uh, um, comedic, so a, comedic actress just got nominated for an Academy Award for a film she's in. Uh, oh, Melissa McCarthy. Yes, Melissa McCarthy. Thank you. Yes. Yeah, she yes. played Sookie St. James. On right. Show. I forgot that she was on it. That's where that she was got another it. Thing that, almost that was her big before. break, essentially. Because I love Melissa McCarthy. Yeah, she was. That's she made. She was basically before she became famous. That's. Where she made her debut. That's where she was famous. <laughs> yeah, that, well, that's where she. Yeah, she broke into the public 
mainstream, gotcha. I guess, gotcha. first. Um, we also had, um, in a very short segment, but it's a memorable one, we have Emily Fincher as Louise Dombrowski. Oh, yeah. You know, the, the uh, Ben and Jerry's babysitter that dances for them on a hook rug with a flashlight. Mm -hmm. Well, mm -hmm. if the name Fincher sounds familiar, yes, she's the sister of none other than David Fincher. Director, wow. Director of Seven and Fight Club and all that. So Yeah. And uh most recently my favorite of my favorite recent movie of his being uh Gone Girl, which was very Fincher esque, if you can use that as an adjective. And he directed, of course, the Girl with the Dragon Tattoo, the you know, the, the US version. Yes, the English version. Yeah, mm -hmm. and uh did a really good job with that, so that was interesting because I kept watching that thinking, when are they going to go to Australia? But they cut that part out. They cut the part out of her living in Australia. So yeah, yeah. I don't know if anybody read the books. Well, the movie was already like two and a half hours, so they had to cut something. That was the problem. I'm like, wow, we're really we're really moving along here. And there's – yeah, I think she just doesn't – yeah. I think, yeah, I think we're just going to kind of – yeah. Yeah. Cut that part. Um but, uh, yeah, I just thought I'd bring her up. Of course, uh, this is also the last appearance we see of Cheryl Lee as Maddie Ferguson. So sad. Yeah, Maddie doesn't really ever come back, does she? Nope. Now, she doesn't show up in the – interestingly, she doesn't show up in the lodge. Yeah. Like Laura did, even though she was killed by Bob. So you think she would. And because, because when Laura says um, – She's Maddie. She's my cousin. I feel like I know her. All that stuff. Right. She's Laura. She's got the blonde hair. Yeah. And, but yeah, the Maddie character doesn't really ever show up again. Which I thought was kind of odd, but okay. Mm. Yeah. All right. But, uh, and then, uh, of course, Grace Brisky is Sarah Palmer. Chris Mulkey is Hank Jennings. David Patrick Kelly is Jerry Horn, et cetera, et cetera. Frank Silva is Bob. So, always. Always, yeah. All right. Always terrifying. Now, before we get started, though, I teased this with Zan earlier before we started recording. Oh, yes. I'm excited. Yeah. So it's not that big of a deal. So don't, you know, don't get your expectations up. But last time we talked about uh, Northern Exposure. Okay. Yeah. And we, we talked did. about a certain DJ on Northern Exposure. Oh, I'm, I'm even more excited about this now. Okay. So, so digging through my archives, I just happened to find. This bad boy. What? The, the Northern Exposure book. Chris in the Morning book. Nice. It's uh, Love Life and the Whole Karmic Enchilada. That is awesome. Which is essentially filled with like Chris Stevens quotes. That is fantastic. So pretty. I remember that book, but I just never owned it. Yeah, it's pretty epic. So That's awesome. I just thought you get a kick out of that. I do. That's fantastic. I haven't looked at this in years, but uh, I was inspired to, after talking about that with you last week. I thought I'd dig that out to make sure I still had it. Thankfully, I did. That's awesome. I'm gonna have to. I'm gonna have to. Uh, yeah, I have to bar loan this out to you. No, I'm gonna have to add to our uh, Chris in the morning little love fest here because I have this. <laughs> so you're, sh or you have a John Corbett CD? Yeah, one of his albums. I didn't realize he released albums. Yeah, he did. So, okay. So, yeah, because I'm just a little bit too much of a John Corbett nerd. Yeah, but I just thought I'd give you a show off my little uh, Northern Exposure street cred here. That is awesome, and that is in excellent condition. Thank I'm you. very proud of how well you keep your books. Oh, I am meticulous about my books. <laughs> well, I am I, too, I, but, you I, know, I care have... more about my books than I do myself, so I take well, better care of my books than I do, yeah. so. Well, we have cats and stuff like that, so yeah. I mean, it could be... No, but I, but yeah, I, thank you for the compliment, though. It was a nice, I like, that. like almost like you just got it. So yeah, because I have a first edition of one of the recent biographies of uh, Jim Henson. Yeah, cat claws all over it. Of course, cat claw marks everywhere. Yeah, See, oh, I was mad. Thankfully, my cats so far have been respectful of my books. That's nice. I haven't had Mine... that problem. I've been lucky with that. Mine does anything to get my attention when she's hungry. We have tons so. of scratching posts, so they tend to stick to those. Thankfully. Really? Your cat's like yes, they actually, scratching posts for scratching? Yes, they do. That's impressive. And I don't it, know how you did that, but that's impressive. <laughs> I don't know how we did it either, but as long as they're doing it, that's all right. But uh, And I've read this book like at least five times. 
So, and it's still in pretty good condition. So I'm very proud Sweet. of it. But anyway, I just thought you get a kick out of that. I did. That's awesome. So, Who wrote that? Uh, this was um, compiled and edited by Louis Chunovic. I don't know that name. I don't know that name either. But uh, it's by Contemporary Books and came out in 1993. In case anybody's curious about want to track right. it down. So that's where you can... That's the book you're looking for. So, yeah, it's Chris in the Morning, Love Life, and the Whole Karmic Enchilada, a northern exposure book. Nice. I guess they figured, well, Twin Beaks is doing books. We should be doing books as well. They should totally be doing books, yep. So, all right. So uh, just thought I'd bring that up before we got going. Oh, and, of course, we had just recently had David Lynch's 73rd birthday. Yes, happy birthday, David Lynch. Happy birthday, David Lynch. That happened in between our, la- our last episode and now. And this episode, yes. All right, so... Uh, we've got everything queued up. Okay. So let me make sure this hasn't like crashed on me. Okay, it looks like we're good. So we are obviously at the one minute thirty one second mark, and uh, the screen is black because our life is black. Everything is black. Now it's dark. And now it's dark. All right. So as we uh, get ready. All right, so if ever you want to seek up with us at home, playing the home game, feel free and uh, get your pause or button ready, and uh, we will start our episode in three, two, one, doink. And we have a rather creepy Palmer House exterior at night. You can yep. still still hear Maddie screaming. Oh. Which is very, rather chilling. Yeah, because there's is there if there's anything more chilling than a than a Cheryl Lee scream, I really don't want to hear what that is. Right. Yeah. But uh, so now we we've kind of jumped ahead to the next morning, the morning after. Oh look the 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 uh, Palmer House has a widow's walk on the side. I never noticed that. So as we do a slow mm-hmm. pan through the living room. We hear the sounds of golf club hitting balls in the living room. (laughs) I love this 80s furniture, too. Yep. There's that ugly carpet once again. Yep. But uh, Leland uh, decides to get some practice in with his nine iron here. And he's probably been up all night doing this because Sarah has been passed out. So we now it's like now as we approach the green edge of the green, Leland oh, Palmer look. readies his nine iron. Oh, Deschanel um, directed this too. Yes, husband. Oh yeah, yeah, Dead Caleb Deschanel. Yeah, uh, yeah. So father of uh, Emily and uh, Zoe and Zoe. And yeah, husband of uh, um, Mary. Yep. Oh, geez, look at him being so matter of fact and. Now you kids. Yep. So they're coming looking for Maddie. She's not the, he, she's not there because hey, she's dead. Mm-hmm. Yeah. He's like, oh, you just missed her alive. And he's trying <laughs> to he's trying to blame them for not coming to see her sooner. Well, she's disappointed. Yeah. yeah. So. Boy, Leland sure has a lot of balls. If I had a if I had a nickel for every ball your father hit in this living room, <laughs> I'd be dead. <laughs> Obviously working on his chip shot. Oh. Yeah, you can write to her because this is 1990. And yeah, yeah, people still internet. wrote. People still wrote then. Yeah, people so said actually yeah, sent they, actual paper letters. They corresponded. I wonder how, I wonder how uh, Leland Palmer oh. feels about James. Leland oh. is attorney always straightening his tie. Because he is sort of, you know, he was his daughter's secret boyfriend. So, I mean, I wonder how he. Now, what I love here is like this kind of hint of menace. Now oh. that, now that we're in on it, yeah. that we get to see Bob creeping out through Leland and like mm-hmm. that threat of like violence at any moment now. And see, once you've studied this performance by Ray wise, that's how, Oh God, Maddie's yep. in that bag. Yep. You're going to need like a f- air freshener or something for that. And uh, once you've seen this, you're yeah. pretty, you're yeah. pretty good at playing Bob or Leland yeah. because 
He's pretty it's casual about carrying an entire dead body on his left shoulder. Just thump right into the trunk. Yep. Pops are right in there. Yep. Yep. Goodbye. License plate. Yep. This is, of course, the same car that Leland and Laura were in when right. they see Mike at the at the stoplight. This is true. Yeah. But uh, sure is a lovely day for a drive, you know, to dump a body. Jeez. <laughs> oh, God. Cleaning the bars. Like, you're so much better than everybody else. Yeah. Yeah. Now, remember, kids, good dental hygiene is important, especially in the slammer. Oh, especially in the slammer. You got to keep your teeth in the slammer. Mm-hmm. Oh. Jerry. Jerry. <laughs> He's apparently been to Japan. But points to uh, <laughs> points to Jerry for the bow tie because bow ties are cool. Bow ties are cool. I have a hard time watching this scene. I don't know if I've ever I... told you this, Charles, but yeah. I have a hard time with human saliva. Oh, no. And when people brush their teeth, it just really grosses me out. Interesting. Especially if they're talking to me with like that foamy spit sound. Is, is that like mouth. a germaphobe thing or? No, it's not a germaphobe thing. It's just a weird thing that I've always had a weird spit thing. Like okay. little kid drooly and I just, I can't handle that stuff. That's okay. Everybody's yeah. got their thing. So I, I get That's it. That's my thing. Yep. So everybody don't brush your teeth in front of Zan. It's not good. Thank you. I would appreciate it. Please brush your teeth. Just warn me. Important, important safety tip. Thing. Thanks, Egon. Uh, excuse me, you said brushing your teeth in front of Zan was bad. <laughs> Nicely so. done. Yeah, I love how I love how Jerry. Jerry's is like a the warrior, worst lawyer ever. No idea what he's doing. Right, I probably know more about the law than Jerry does. Yeah, again, back to Ghostbusters too. Yeah, I do mostly probate stuff and tax law. I got my <laughs> law degree at night school. So who does yeah. your taxes? Yeah, and so see, here is a. Uh, Here's the problem when you are Benjamin Horn. Yep. On the night when bad stuff goes down, you're doing all the wrong shit. Right. He just said, here, where were you when Laura died? I was with Catherine. I was like, how do you tell somebody that? Okay, I'm wondering something about this scene. How do you how, smoke how, in the jail? Well, that, like, okay, the, having the cigars is one thing. How does he still have a lighter in jail? Ooh, excellent question. Didn't, I mean, didn't anybody bother frisking him at this point? Yeah, seriously. I just, but also, it, it, this just really bugs me. And Jerry came up to him and said, you know, he said, did you kill her? Like, you know, yeah, of course, he doesn't you know, know, they always ask you that. But, um, but then he's like, the, 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 you know, the truth is the last thing your lawyer should know. I think there's a little piece of Jerry that would not be surprised if Ben Horn had said yes. No, because, uh, you know, he, us, he, he, know, know he obviously knows Ben best. Oh, here's our little yeah. flashback scene with Louise Dombrowski. David mm-hmm. Fincher's sister. Keep that in mind. What's really kind of strange about this is this kind of, yeah. this is a little bit of an Audrey dance here. Yep. She got some moves. I'll give her that. She does have some moves. Yep. And, and of course yeah. the slow-mo helps, but it's, it, it's, it's shot really well, I think. It is. It really is. And, oh, jeez. And, and these two kids, like, it's like they got, like, two Ralphies from A Christmas Story. It's so funny, <laughs> too. Yeah, they're like... You can tell exactly which one's supposed to be which. Well, you kind of have to figure what this is like the '60s or something when they were kids, like late '50s, early '60s. Yeah, yeah. so they're going They obviously have like you know the horn rim glasses and all that. And... Yeah. Yeah, that's a good question because I'm thinking about how old Richard Bamer actually is and how he. Uh... Yeah. Not sure the exact timeline here, but yeah. but I think late fifties, early sixties is a good guess. Yeah, fifties. Like Actually, I said, I said it's more fifties it or forties. Well, it looks. Yeah, it could be. I don't know, but well, this is you know obviously nineteen ninety. So if you go back, mm. you figure how old are they here in their late forties? Forties, fifties. Yeah, that's so, true. So go back, say thirty years. Yeah, that would oh. be in the early sixties. Oh. oh my God! There's like two of them. The Moran sisters look exactly the same. It's so adorable. They go to the same perm stylist. Yep, they do this. They get their hair done the same place. Maybe they get discounts for volume. Yeah, they get a big group discount. Oh, so Lucy oh, introduced so Gwen to Hawk. Yeah. 
Yeah, my name is Hawk. So Gwen, awesome. Gwen tries to be woke here. <laughs> Gwen is not going to do a very good job about that. You must hate us white people. <laughs> After all we've done to you. But, but Hawk, Hawk has a great retort. Some of my best friends are white people. I love that because that's so <laughs> that was, what that everybody was, says. That was great. When I someone l- accuses them of being racist. Yeah. It was so funny that he got to deliver that line. That's so great. A shaman priest. In our world, he is a shoe salesman. Next, on the Twilight Zone. (laughs) That's what it sounded like. Very Rod Serling to me. Back to work, dancing around. It's Fred Astaire. He cannot figure out how to not draw attention to himself. Yep. But here's the thing about grief, is that it makes people do crazy things, and people don't necessarily suspect you for doing weird things when you're going through a period of major grief. Leland singing in the rain of terror. The rain of terror. Does he know we arrested Ben Horn? I don't know. He might be excited about it because he knows we didn't (laughs) arrest him. Right, exactly. He might take it pretty well. You know... Either wear real waiters or don't even bother. Yeah. The guy's got like half chaps waiters. It's bizarre. And they should be happy because he's like free entertainment for the for the uh, guests. He just shows up and dances and sings. Ten in the morning. I'd listen to some sort of, you know, Fred Astaire review at ten in the morning. <laughs> now here, oh it's god, it's look it's at Ray Wise with his fake, like. He's he's sort of he's laughing because he's like, oh my god, you guys are so stupid. He's like, I can't believe I'm getting away with this. I'm totally getting away with this. And he's like, oh wait a minute, wait a minute, didn't I kill a guy because he, I thought it was him. Leland killed a guy. Leland killed a guy. Oh, look at him trying to cry. Yeah, that's and trying know, to It's like this is my I mock tears. I think that's the mark of a really good actor. That he can when, he can act fake, right? When you can see them acting fake, but also see them acting that same emotion. Yeah. I don't know if you've ever watched American Horror Story. Oh yeah, I've watched it. Yes. But my favorite one, which was Freak Show, mm-hmm. there was a character that Jessica Lang. Oh, I love murdered. this. I love this part. I don't mean to interrupt, but I love this. No, part this is yeah. Because he starts crying, and then Ray Wise, and he's so good here. He turns that into this like. I'm totally getting away with this. <laughs> this psychotic, right. maniacal laughter. Yeah. So there's a there's someone that she murders, and then someone who is murdered, and she really loved the person who was murdered. And when she's upset about that, it's so genuine. But when she's trying to be sad about the person she killed, you can tell it's so fake. Right. And this is Jessica Lang, who is fantastic, obviously. And I think that's a major. Um, major mark of a good actor when you can do them both. Yeah, and she did that in multiple seasons. She was so good mm-hmm. on that show. She was wonderful. I think right here Cooper's on to something. Well, that's what his his instincts I think are kicking in, and he's like something's yeah. not right here, but he doesn't quite know what it is. And how would you ever possibly figure something like this out? Probably because they're so zeroing in on Ben at the moment. You know what I think is funny? Yeah. That. You know, now it's almost 30 years later and Ray Wise kind of looks like that. He's got the right. white hair. But he's, he's, he turned, lo- he's turned into white-haired Leland. Yes. But he looks better than he does right here. Yeah. He's, yeah, he's he's certainly aged Asian better than well, this. Yes. And I, I oh. love it how like he makes sure everybody's out of, out of uh, view and then st- goes right back to the dancing. Just mm-hmm. having a ball. Literally. That's so funny. Somebody's getting a blood test. Or, oh. or some kind of exam. We won't discuss what, but you know. Yeah, no. Somebody's somebody's getting a cavity exam. No. All right. Now bend over. And I'm not talking about uh, <laughs> cavity a, search. I'm not talking about a dentist's appointment. No. Ouch. He just got his cholesterol taken. Yep. I'm pretty sure Doc this Hayward is... enjoyed that quite a bit. I think he probably did. Yeah. He'd and really enjoy thing. it if he knew like what happens later in the season. I yeah. Oh yeah. I think that Ben Horn, while he 
has brought a lot of jobs to town. Yeah. He's just not even. I, I think everybody would love to see him go down that sort of yeah. that sort of Schadenfreude of the. Um, well, it's not like he doesn't deserve it at this point because he's up to all these shady activities. Right, he's up to shady activities, and uh, he's a terrible father and husband too. Right, exactly, and as more mm-hmm. of, we'll get that once we see Audrey later in this episode. Mm-hmm. Oh, it's the diary. Yeah. Uh, a book. Thanks, Jerry. Yeah. I don't want to touch your evidence, Cooper. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I'm not getting my fingerprints on that. We know you own one Ajax. So did Laura, and we're pretty sure you had sex with Laura because you're gross. The jig is up. Yeah. Yeah, who who are you really? I'm Batman. Who said that before? Hmm. Who are you really? Who are you? you? Roll darts here. We can talk about horrors and porn. (laughs) Let's engage in locker room talk. I love when Cooper tries to be all locker room and all all smarmy. Yeah. So come on, we're all we're all bros here. We can talk about it. So gross. I mean, he's. I think if you didn't know Cooper, you might believe it, but it's so not Cooper's, not right. Cooper's deal. Right. And that comes off a little forced, obviously, because it's not Cooper's natural wheelhouse. No, it's not his natural. It's not his natural thing to be gross and disrespectful like that. Right. Well, anyway, he did. He did. Did do that though, pretty well with Jacques, if you remember. He does it great with you know, when, yeah. he, when he got him to say, you know, the bite but the bullet speech. Like, you yeah. know, why don't you tell me what happened with that? And, and he got Jock's confidence. Yeah, exactly. Because he acted like he knew a little bit. But he, yeah. And that, that sort of, because when you come in blazing, like you think you know everything, people aren't going to want to talk to you. But when you're, when you're sort of like, yeah, I, I, uh, I know Leo. <laughs> you know, you just <laughs> drop, you drop the right name at the right time. Um. I love this right here. Yes. I strongly suggest that you get yourself a better lawyer. <laughs> <laughs> it's like even Jerry knows how bad he is. Seriously. It's like, I'll own that. That's on me. I get that. Oh, boy. It's Bobby's, going down. Uh, Bobby's listening to the tape that he found in Leo's boot. What's going down at Leland's house? Don't disappoint me. Who's talking? Why is Benjamin Horn? Dun, dun, dun. Seriously, this is just the the a, all of the sins of Benjamin Horn are getting figured out tonight. Yeah, and then he's got it on tape that Benjamin Horn was doing a deal with Leo about the burning down the mill. Right, exactly. So this is like blackmail material. It's gold. Oh yeah, and here's the thing. So guess who just came up with another get rich quick scheme? I think. I figured it out. Do you love me? Check yes or no. Seriously. <laughs> oh, good lord! Check this Something's box. Going... Something you got it. We got to go yeah. change Leo's water dish. That's the thing about Leo. Yeah. He um. He's not dumb. Yeah. You know, he's going to cover his tracks, and he's out to get his himself. It's a credit to a mention Amic that she can still look good covered in baby food. Baby food and cut up hot dogs. Yep. <laughs> Their ship is about to come in. Yep. Because hey, you know, my get rich quick schemes always work. Although, I don't know why he won't just go back to selling cocaine. I mean, that's going right? to do it. No, he was good at that. Yeah, he knew some people. Yeah. And unfortunately, he killed one of those guys. Right, but he 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 kind of like killed his supply chain. That's the problem. Yeah. Yep. But, uh, you know, you figure the law of averages, though. Eventually, one of his stupid schemes has to work, right? Yeah, he's going to be due for something at this point. So. Dude. Nice bandana, Bobby. Rocking the do-rag. Jeez. Meanwhile, at the double R. I will say, I did yeah. enjoy the meatloaf at the double R diner. Uh huh. Yeah. 
Now, this should tip Norma off right off there that she's a food critic. Who the hell does this? Toad, apparently. Oh, you mean no, bite, take, bite, take a bite? Of, yeah, it's like, bitch. somebody else's food. It's like, bitch, I will cut you. Seriously. <laughs> yeah. I've seen, and Toad is just, like, really cool with it, if you notice. He's like, uh, no biggie. Toad's like, whatever. Yep. Oh, gross. Oh, here comes Ernie Niles, the professor. Gross. Because nothing says trustworthy like a skeevy dude in, like, a bad jacket, a, a bad toupee, and uh, a an nut-button shirt from the 70s. Ernie, you're, you need to run. Because she's a little bit of a black widow. Well, he's, he, he's not exactly Mr., uh, you know, goody two-shoes himself, though. No, that's true. But that's the thing, is that there's, as we remember from the... They kind of deserve each other. The uh, secret history. Yeah. This is her stepmother. Right. Who, um, oh, it's interesting right there because he's talking about how the, that, you know, they're both good looking and it doesn't skip a generation and yeah, it's that's not, not her all, daughter. That's not at all creepy. Yeah. No, it's not at all creepy. And Norma is not her daughter. So. Right. I think she's, uh, and this, is, this goes to tell you about Norma's character. Norma is a decent person. No matter what, this woman was married to her father. Right. This woman is the mother of her sister. So, but, I mean, but obviously, we didn't know this at the time. She's going to be civil. I think we know it. It says a lot about Norma's character. Right. When I was at that diner, I sat pretty much right where Toad is. Really? So, yeah. It's a different counter. Though, you got, you got the Toad chair. The toad st- got the toad you got seat. the Toad stool. The ah! Toad Excellent. That's what that is. Nice one. I can't top that. <laughs> I don't think you can. I don't think you should try. That's just I should that's just quit just I should of... I should just quit right now. That's as good as it's gonna get, folks. I wanna know whatever possessed anybody outside of sports casting to wear a jacket like that. Right. Or a used car salesman. Yeah, seriously. So what's this? Hmm. A thousand Houston by three points. Oh, I wonder how he is a financial analyst. Yeah. You know, if Ernie's like betting a thousand bucks on a three point spread, he pretty much deserves everything he's going to get. Yeah, pretty much. Pretty much. And here we have. uh, Could I have a nice cup of cocoa? Can I please have uh, some water and maybe a little sandwich? Maybe a pop tart. Here's, now, here's a deputy expendable coming in. Seriously, yeah. These are right. the, the cops we never see. In exactly. Don't. So, oh. Yep. Exactly how <laughs> do you get thwarted by a one-armed man? I know, exactly. That's pretty impressive, I have to say. Did you check the corner, Starling? Did you check the corner? No, sir. <laughs> That's why you're dead. Exactly. You're dead, Starling. Did you check your, where's your, where's your blind, blind spot, spot? Starling? Corner, sir. Did you check the corner? No, sir. That's why you're dead. I thought you'd appreciate the silence of the lambs reset. I always appreciate that. Yeah, when Hank is gone for two days. Yeah, he's just like, oh, no big deal. I was gone for like a couple of days. Didn't tell yeah. anybody. And he's like, I had business to take care of. It's like, no, she should be calling his parole officer. Right. Frankly. Oh, geez. So now he's laying on the sob story. And Norma's falling for it. People from my past who want to see me fail. Yeah, okay, yeah. whatever. Yeah, like, uh, yeah, it's, you know, it's all these unsavory characters that I choose to hang out with. That I keep are, calling for yeah, jobs. Yeah, you know, it's it's all their fault. Everybody's fault but yours, Hank. Mm-hmm. Sometimes there's something about when a creepy guy touches a woman very gently and right. slowly well, that is so is, ominous. Well, especially when he's trying to work her here. Or I'm thinking of when Leo says to Shelly, I'll stop by the diner later. Save me some pie. Right. That It's just there is something so ominous about it. It's terrible. Well, you know, if it's somebody that you have genuine affection for and it's that's reciprocated, different. that's one thing. Yeah. But... But when you know the guy's a total skis, 
then yes. And he's yeah, he's terrible. Yeah. Yeah. Thanks for bringing up prison like in the first breath. Right. Nice to see you too, Vivian. Yeah. Gross. Those two like those two should have hooked up, Vivian and and Hank. Honestly. I am having a really hard time right now deciding who I dislike more. It's a tie, isn't it? It's a coin. It's, really, it's, a, coin, really it's a coin tough. flip. Yeah. I'm going to oh. say Vivian. Yeah. Because of Annie's suicide attempt. I'll give you. That's good. That's a good argument. Yeah. That's that, nobody. Nobody tried to commit suicide because of Hank. Bad binoculars. Bad bad binoculars. Ah uh, ha 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 ha. <laughs> nice one. Very nice. Very subtle too. Oh, and it's it's a really old reference too. I feel kind yeah, of old. I was gonna say that's a little. Anyone under the age of thirty might not get that one. Might not get. Yeah, yeah. If you ever had cable and didn't have to watch cartoons on UHF <laughs> right. Right. channels, right. You might not know what I'm talking about. Oh. So he's like. Yeah. Now, Harry. If you notice in the background, there's a picture of Harry S. Truman on Harry's wall. So is that Wouldn't you? Is that considered like a self-portrait? I, it, I well, I think it's hero <laughs> worship. Exactly. His know, name so, is Harry S. Truman. I just think it's hilarious that Harry's office yeah. has a picture of Harry S. The actual Harry S. Truman. That's so awesome. <laughs> it's one of those little Easter hard. egg Easter eggs in the background. Won't be too hard to remember that. <laughs> Aw, Josie. Yep. Like, wait a minute, assistant. Uh oh, Asian fellow. What do you look like? Uh, you know, and like an Asian fellow. Oh yes, her cousin Jonathan. She told me it was her assistant, Mister Lee. Wait a second. <laughs> dun dun dun. Mister Lee, Mister Lee. Oh, dun, Mr. Does not compute. Mister Lee. Andre. Got a bad feeling about this. Yeah, you and half the cast of Star Wars. No, you know. Yeah. Philip Gerard with one arm beat the crap out of her six foot two deputy. <laughs> oh, I know. Doesn't really say a lot for their uh, their police force, does it? Like I said, we've never seen that guy before, and we're actually kind of never going to see him again. So, like, he didn't just have his arm tied behind his back; he had the whole arm off and still took out the deputy. <laughs> That's the thing. Al Strobel is a legit one armed man. People, you don't you don't mess with Mike, man. Yeah. It's you know they 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 did their due diligence with this and they found an actual one armed <laughs> actor for that. Ah, uh, foreshadowing. Yep. So uh, now Andy, she was gone for a few days. There is yeah. no way she no. could be have that could be her baby. Yeah, Andy. For you know, just don't even. It's like, and he's down. Andy doesn't know how cell phones works either. Apparently, Andy is down. Repeat. Andy is down. Andy is down. Now, I love this scene. I love this because obviously I'm a big Pete fan, mm -hmm. but I love Pete in this scene. He's so good. Oh, yeah. He's so excited. He's just having a ball with this. <laughs> and it's so funny to see him laughing and just torment taunting Ben yep. here. I have a message for you. And I'm carrying it around in this gigantic tape recorder. I had that same tape cassette player. Because it's 1990. Yeah, I had that same cassette player when I was like eight. See, these are the cassette players when they're black. Yeah. When they're all black. I think they look like tricorders. Kind of. Yeah. Like, although just large tricorders. I like how... Uh, She's Pete alive! Martell, I love how Pete Martell is totally fine playing... Like this mean message to the guy that his wife had had an affair with. Well, in in a way, he's kind of getting revenge here because yeah, Ben's, that's in, true. Ben's in jail, and Catherine is basically blackmailing him to sign over the Ghostwood. Mm -hmm. Yep. So she's basically saying, yeah. "I don't know if I remember being with you or not the night Laura Palmer died. Maybe I do. Maybe I don't." Benji. It's amazing. Yeah, like, you okay there, Benji? So she's basically saying, if you want me to tell the cops that you were with me the night Laura Palmer died, yep. I need to have Ghostwood. 
pee taunting Ben in the scene is everything. Mm -hmm. It's so he's so he's he's so funny just laughing at him and yeah, walking around the the cell. It's amazing that Catherine though actually trusted him to do this. That's one thing you can do. You can trust Pete. You know. <laughs> And Pete, of course, because he loves Catherine, he's just so eager to do whatever she wants. He loves she, Catherine. He kisses and the tape player. <laughs> he he doesn't like Ben Horn. Nobody likes Ben Horn. No. She set me up. Yeah, she did, dumbass. Yep. And you fell for it like the bastard you are. Like the idiot you are. <laughs> Go back to running whores and selling perfume because that's all you know how to do. So Ben's going to have a little tantrum here. Yeah, it's you know, which I think is funny because yep. it's like nothing in this cell could possibly weigh more yep. than like five pounds. Yeah, take that pillow. No, I th I think that uh, this is what everybody hopes President Trump will will be doing at some point in the near future. Fingers mm -hmm. crossed. Screaming, screaming, you bitch to Nancy Pelosi in, in jail. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> she set me up. That'd be nice. She totally set me up. Here we have another uh, cop that we've never seen before. I'm cool. I'm cool. Yeah, whatever. I'm just sitting on the toilet. I'm cool. <laughs> and I take you uh, out to Missouri. Uh, yeah, the Surrey with a fringe on top is what he's singing here. If yes. You're not familiar. And mm -hmm. uh, welcome to the Leland Palmer School of Driving. Yeah, this is, you know, he's just going to drive crazy and get pulled over. And Ridiculous. Cooper is whistling the same so song. Did you notice? Yes, it's so adorable. It's like he was like uh, dialed in with what Leland was doing subconsciously. I, uh, I always think it's really funny that um, when crim in, in real life this happens too, criminals will um, be in the middle of g escaping from a crime yeah. that was perfect, but they just can't not get their ass pulled over. Right. They have to speed or drive erratically uh -oh. or something like that. Ruh -roh. Yeah, you should have figured out how to drive, Bob. Yep. Man, why am I always getting hassled by the 5 -oh? Did you pull me over? Because I'm in a convertible. <laughs> and it's February. Yep. Exactly. With the top down. Seriously. <laughs> <laughs> the heck is wrong with you? I'm sorry. I'm just yeah. so excited. Yeah. I was just like awkwardly drive, weaving all over the road there trying to kill people. Yeah, it's just nothing. I just really want to get to this golf course and, you know, dump yeah. a body. Oh, did I say that out loud? Sorry. No, that's, yeah, to forget, no, dump a, dump, dump a, a dump bogey. A, yeah, something like that, you know. Oh, let's make something. Oh, oh by the way, I, I remembered something. Yeah, let's make something up to uh, throw yeah. the uh, police off of the trail. And we're going to uh, set Ben Horn up a little bit. And he was talking something about a dairy. A dairy. A dairy. You sure he wasn't? You sure he just wasn't talking about going to Dairy Queen for a DQ blizzard? I think he might have been talking about a diary. Oh, okay. But. Uh, so Harry gets distracted by Lucy calling. Mm -hmm. Hey, you play golf? <laughs> <laughs> of course, Cooper enjoys golf for its precision. Yeah, around at the club. I think he's gonna club you. Club yeah. you, Cooper. Yeah. Let me show you my spiffy new nine iron. Don't look in the bag, though. It's it's kind of dirty. Yeah. Oh, I love that. No, I no. Love I love that. Opens the trunk and yeah. Cooper turns right around. Right now, this is you know just that Bob being just brazen here. Because he pops open the trunk intentionally, and he's like ready to club Cooper. He, yeah, he's gonna he's gonna take Cooper down. He was gonna do it right there, even with Harry around. He was gonna kill him. Yep. Yep. I'll get him later. Oh, next time. Yep. I'll make sure he gets trapped oh, in the boy, black lodge. He <laughs> Doppelganger. Yep. If you notice, the yeah. license plate is seven ten. Y E P, yep. and if you take seven ten and turn it upside down, 
It's oil. Oil. Yep. Scorched engine oil. Scorched engine oil. I can smell it. it smells like something's burning. Ah. Uh, poor Andy. <laughs> I like how Hawks just looks over like, yeah, Andy yeah. passed out again. Yeah. He's going to go about my day. I'm pretty sure that Andy's got the ice pack on his head because Gwen's talking to him. Yeah, he's not he's because like, he fell. He's like, put it over my ear, Lucy. I don't want to hear this. <laughs> She's giving me such a headache. Oh, uh, it's like personal space, Gwen. Yeah, I don't know if you want to talk about this in front of Gwen either. It's you know, he's basically going to tell Lucy, "There's no way I got you pregnant." So, right? Who did? But, uh, and Gwen is just prattling on here. Yikes. <laughs> uh. I love that even Andy is just like, WTF. <laughs> <laughs> I had a nickel every time I heard that one. Yeah, is that why you've been pregnant a million times, Gwen? Right. So what you're saying, you're a slut, Gwen? Is that what you're saying? Well, now Andy's telling her that everything's inconclusive now. Right. Shut up, Gwen. We don't know what's going on. Ah. <laughs> One thing Lucy and Andy can agree on, <laughs> telling Gwen to shut Gwen up. Gwen needs to shut up. <laughs> yeah. Seriously. Gwen brought them back together. <laughs> yep. Okay, here's the thing. Here's the thing, Andy. If your sperm were dead and then they came back to life, but they were dead, yeah. When maybe Lucy, when you when you had sex with Lucy, maybe you're not the father. Yeah, that's the thing. Yeah. Um, hey, Andy, did I tell you that you know Horn's department store gives their employees a twenty percent discount? Yeah. <laughs> that's the thing too. You know, it, it, I don't care who the father is. Just do not let. Dick Tremaine raise that child, please. Oh, right. I really appreciate it. Hmm. Mike's got to do a little sniffing. Yeah. <laughs> it's not him, though. I mean, that's I, that, that's the strange thing about uh, this case, is that there's really not going to be any possibility for justice nope. because of the supernatural aspect of it. But there are some interesting techniques that they use for determining guilt or innocence because of the supernatural aspect. I kind of, of I kind of like Jerry here. He's just like, uh, you know, is there something you'd like to share with the class? Yeah, Jerry, you've you're out of your element, Jerry. A lot has gone on since you were in Japan. Right. <laughs> so, so Jerry's laying down that the um, twenty four hours are up. Yep. And they have to charge him or let him go. So he's being formally charged with the. Uh, so now he's charged. Wah, wah. Bah, 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 bah. You know, to be fair, Jerry did say he was a bad lawyer and that Ben he should did. get a different he, one. And he actually advised him. He was pretty upfront about that. To to get new new counsel. So now Ben loses his shit again. Yeah, oh, Ben's mad. I mean, Ben's Jersey's got, ben, Ben's got a temper. Town. He obviously got over it as he got older. Got over that temper of his. Who? Ben. Ben, yeah, well, he had a little bit of psychosis during the Civil War. <laughs> That's true. That he had a, he had a break. Breakthrough. Uh, so, so Harry here is just like, look, you know, I'm sick of all the mumbo jumbo. Uh, we've got hard evidence. You know, it's, it's like that SNL skit. It's like they were inspired by the SNL skit. Oh, dude, you saw me. If, mm, Harry, if I throw, throw a rock at this window, Leo Johnson's free to breaks, go. <laughs> yeah. Leo, you're free to go. <laughs> oh, see, here we go. She's describing the food we should totally know by now. Yeah. That that's, that that's what's Meanwhile, happening. Meanwhile, Hank is just gnawing on some ribs. Nom, 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 nom. I just don't think you should go to a restaurant and eat with your hands like that. And you that. notice he's drinking a beer while the others are having wine. So that mm -hmm. kind of, they're trying to really emphasize that he's just has no class whatsoever. And he doesn't know how to be a gentleman because right. when ladies leave the table, the gentlemen he, are standing. And, and he's the only one that uh, has a nap, you know, like his 
napkin in his tucked in his shirt. Yep, he's got a bib. Uh, so uh You like school in the summertime, no class. No class. Oh my gosh, look at that uh Yeah, he's got a domino tie. Look at that bolo tie with the domino in it. Yep. Now you notice it's a different domino than he the one that he sketched, because remember that was double threes. Yeah. This is now double four bolo. Bullet so tie. what they're what they're talking about is that they actually know each other from prison. Yes, Hank and uh, Ernie. Yeah, they so. he knew the professor back in the day. Mm-hmm. Yep. The professor and Marianne. Yeah. What did you? <laughs> of course, you met him at a Republican fundraiser. Of course, you did. Of course, you did. Vivian wants you to handle all of her investments. Really? Yeah. Yeah. I'm totally turning over a new leaf. Totally. Seriously? Yeah. Yeah, I don't even... Yeah. Yeah, me and my wife, Morgan Fairchild. Yeah, that's the yeah, ticket. Yeah, that's the ticket. Yeah. There's a savings and loan. Yeah, everybody... <laughs> yeah, the savings and loan stole from everybody else, so that's fine. Yeah. Yeah. Can we Unless blame it's a, Can we blame Ernie for that? The savings no. and loan scandal? No, I think we're going to blame Ivan Boski for that. Okay, we'll do that then. All right. That sounds good. Well, he was more the insider trader. Maybe stuff. maybe Ernie did a little part of it. I'm blaming him and his asshole. So so now Hank is kind of like leaning on Ernie here saying, "Look, uh it'd be a shame if uh Vivian found out about your past, dude." Yeah, we'll talk seriously. more later about this. So he's already yeah. work, working an angle here. Because I'm a really bad blackmailer. Yeah. Uh, see, he figured it out. How to be a gentleman. I like to propose a toast with my beer mug. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. To crime. Gentlemen. To crime. To evil. Yep. <laughs> oh. To the professor. Oh wait, did I say that? Oh, never mind. Hang on a second. No, I don't. Wait a minute. That's uh. Yeah. Still, I love how this town only has two restaurants. And I love he just stays chug standing. It. Chug, chug, chug. Chug it down. Burp. Yep. Classy. Why don't you just pick? Your, at, why don't you just pick she, your teeth while you're at it? She's looking at Hank like, "What the hell did I hitch myself to?" <laughs> <gasps> Is Santa gonna show up? Yep. That milk will cool on you. Cool on you. Ugh. One of my all time favorite Mary Tyler Moore quotes. Oh, 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 here's Kyle McLaughlin with his shirt off. No, you're, I'm having a good time with this. You're welcome, ladies. Thank and certain sir. gentlemen. Um Mary Tyler Moore is trying to get to sleep and she says, Ugh, warm milk tastes like warm milk. <laughs> <laughs> I've never liked warm milk. No, it's gross. Unless there's chocolate in it, I don't want yeah, it. Yeah, I'm, not, I'm surprised you know that I'm surprised that pie has not at been eleven o'clock at night, Cooper. I'm Do you surprised. remember what happened the last time? Right. I'm surprised that pie is still intact. Oh yeah. Like maybe I'll put on a shirt to answer the door, but I won't button this it. It's a little bit better. Yeah. Oh, Audrey. <laughs> I was pretty sure you'd have your shirt off. Is it okay if I come in? <laughs> I can wait till you take your shirt off. Is that where you got shot? Yes, on my body and right here on the floor where yes. we're standing. I bet if you look under the bed, her note is still there. No. Yeah, seriously. <laughs> Why did it take you like a friggin' week to find my note, dumbass? And what does it say about the cleaning service that they never found the note under his bed? That's a good point. Yeah. Thank, thank you. Yeah. So. She's trying to figure out exactly what the deal is with her dad. Yeah, see, he's a terrible person. What? All she ever wanted was him to love her. Yeah, well, too bad. He's ashamed of her. Well, he's he's just a terrible person. I was just saying, it's just no, Audrey. It's just your father's an asshole. Just let's yeah, just he's just a bad. He's just accept a bad that. Dude. Move on. You'll be much better off once you accept that. Aww. it's not your fault. It's his. Audrey feels feels the need to tell Cooper that she uh, no. she kept her honor 
while she was at the whorehouse in prison. Yeah. Audrey also makes a point of always getting on his bed. Have you noticed? Wouldn't you? Well, you might not. <laughs> I, sure I would. wouldn't. No. I, that's the first place I would go. Maybe, like, on oh, her, maybe on her bed, but not his bed. <laughs> oh, like this you... is great. What is this? A chenille bed spread? I love it. At least he finally got the phone. Yeah. Cooper's going to have to go out. Go to your room and lock the door because now it's a horror movie. Got trouble up the mill. Trouble down the mill. And hope they don't have blasters, Audrey. <laughs> nice. Very nice. Nice. <laughs> well played. Something crazy is about to go on. It has happened again. Again. It has happened again. It has happened again. Mm-mm. This better be worth it. <laughs> I had my shirt off and Audrey was in my bed. Oh, that's plastic. <laughs> oh. Seen this before. Oh, yeah, this looks familiar. It looks really familiar. Oh, oh like it's, it's Maddie. She's dead, wrapped in polyethylene. See, this is this is not good. It's deja vu. All dun, right. dun, dun. Dun, dun, dun. Now we have to wait a whole week. Ah, they... Dang it. Uh, Dang it, network television of the 90s and how difficult it was to wait. Dude, you have no idea. Remember, I oh. watched it live. A whole week we had to wait for this stuff. It's killing me, but... Uh, oh. Yeah, so that was a, a rather interesting episode. Now, obviously, you know, it kind of follows up a lot of what we had last week or last time, but uh, mm -hmm. but it's also that kind of bridging gap to the big as we build up to the finale next time. Yes, yes, it, we still we still have some bridge episodes we have to get through. Yeah. So we have to start. Everything's got to start coming together yeah. before it starts unraveling again. So essentially, we've got you know. The, there's another dead body. They're obviously going after the wrong guy. Mm -hmm. so, yeah, because so they've got to get like figure this out quickly, right? Because Benjamin Horn has been in jail for the last 24 hours. Yeah, which we are well aware of. Thank but he's you, charged Jerry. now, so they could keep him. But the thing is, he's been in jail for 24 hours, and this body is less than 24 hours dead. Right. So obviously, he's got an alibi. It's obviously not him that killed yes. Maddie. So right. So that's and a pretty good they, alibi that, oh, hey, I was in your custody when this body was found. Or And what's under Maddie's killed? fingernail? What letter? I can't remember. It's like a B, I think. I don't remember for sure, but. Um, no, no, no. Let's see. Let's see. There was an R under Laura's. And a T under Teresa Banks. Right. So it was probably the B then. I think it's the B. I forget. But yeah, yeah. so once they find the letter. They put up RBT on the blackboard. Yeah. And we'll talk about to, and we'll talk about that. We'll talk about that. Yeah. So I think it's the B. Yeah. And so they go. I think you're right. Once they realize that this is the same modus operandi, <laughs> as Gordon Cole would say, they're going to realize that they've had the wrong man in jail. Now, I will say this. They do have a guy who is guilty of conspiracy to commit arson and essentially human trafficking <laughs> right so it's it's not like ben is completely innocent here let's keep he's that not in mind. innocent he just is not in yeah. jail for what he was charged with which oh, is the, and by horrible. the way he was yeah he was also like uh owner of a br illegal brothel that's what i said essentially yeah. human yeah. trafficking yeah but, because not only is it an illegal brothel well, and, uh, and, and prostitution yes Right. It's prostitution. So there we have that. Yeah. But it's also, and I believe the technical term for this is uh, transporting minors across borders for immoral purposes. Right. Oh, and that, wasn't that also like um, used to funnel drugs out of Canada as well? Well, does Ben Horn know that? <sighs> um, I mean, I want to say he does because he's in league with Leo Johnson. Right. Exactly. He, he had to know something because, yeah, he, he was in, he and Leo... He was essentially working with that angle. But I don't know if he's he's working. Because I, I don't know. What I, th what I think was that Ben was arranging for the drugs to get to Leo, and then Leo would get them to Bobby, and then Bobby would distribute them at school. 
See, right? I thought that, yeah, and I that's the part I'm not sure is where Ben Horn yeah. gets in with Leo Johnson and Jacques Renault. Or did, or Leo did, and Jacques were doing a lot of the drug running. Or, well, okay, so then maybe Ben oversaw Jacques, and then Jacques got the yeah. drugs to to Leo, and then from Leo to Bobby. See, yeah, I'm not I'm not really sure how that would work. Because I'm not sure what the perfect. drug food chain here is. I don't know the drug food chain, and I don't know but I don't I'm, know the Flesh World food chain either. Right. It was Ben Horn involved with the Flesh World stuff. Do we really want to know the Flesh World food chain? I really don't want to know. The I don't think so. No, <laughs> I'm okay with not knowing that. Yeah, that's not good. <laughs> that's not good. Yeah. But so uh, anyway, so uh, so that's our episode. What's your rating for this one? Oh, what is my rating for this one? Eight and a half pieces of slightly dry salmon. Nice, nice. Uh, we are in sync again, believe it or not. Um. Eight and a half golf balls on a living room chair. Golf balls in the living room. That's a good one. Yeah, this one is just this. This it's, is a, it's not as strong as the last episode, and certainly not as strong as the next episode. No, this is definitely a bridge episode, but it does keep you riveted because you want to know what's going on, right? And you know, it, because the whole time Benjamin Horn is in jail, right? And you're like, no, he's such a horrible guy, but he didn't do this. It was like. This is like the one thing he didn't do. Right. Was kill Laura Palmer. And then is Leland going to get away? Is Leland going to kill Cooper? Is Leland going to kill Sarah Palmer? We don't know. Yeah. And I I think what drags this episode down is mostly because a lot of it is focused on introducing Ernie and Vivian. So there's a lot of time with them. Right. And, And as you know, because we just had the revelation in the previous episode you're just like, okay, I, d- I don't care about that. I just want to know what's going on with Leland. I want to know what's going on with the main mystery. I don't care about this. Right, right. Like, I just want to see Leland, like, trying to be cocky and evade being captured. Right, and that's the thing, is that if you're going to deal with, you know... And killing people, yes. Even when you're doing, like, a Norma story, you got to deal with Hank in a Norma story, and you're like, oh, God. Yeah. Because, you know, I can't stand... Hank Jennings. He does so it, not. So it does kind of drag down the momentum a little bit. Yeah, it does drag it down a little bit, but it's like it's a necessary right. bridge to because you can't just have you know gut wrenching episode after gut wrenching episode. Right. You've got to have something in there that has a little bit of comic relief, which this has with Andy and. Plus, you got to give your main actors a break. They, they can't too. do the entire carry the entire episode. Well, and you have to build up suspense again. Yeah, you know, what... especially when you have like the big episode coming up next. Yes, you know you have to build up the suspense. Like, what the heck is going on? Right. You know who, what's going to happen with Leland? Is he going to? Are they going to find him in time? Is Ben Horn going to give in to Catherine? You don't know. So it this is a good episode to build suspense up again. Yeah. So obviously, in our next episode. Our big 50th episode. 50th episode. 50th episode of Ghost We need to do something really special for that. I think we should watch a really good episode where we, you know. Well, I know a really good episode to watch would be the next episode. I think that's a great. Let's do that. Arbitrary Law we're going to talk about. So this would be, what, the ninth episode of season two next time? And... Um, it's a biggie, obviously. It's it's the culmination. It's, Basically, yeah. it's the finale to the Laura Palmer mystery. Right. We're going to move on from Laura because – and they're going to realize that there's really not a whole hell of a lot they can do. Right. You know? It's but, just going to be this sort of unresolved situation. But it does kind of bring at least this phase of the series to a close. As, right. we, enter, as I, we enter a different phase, the Wyndham Earl phase. The Wyndham Earl phase, the, the final end of Jean Reno. Right. And so help me God, the James Hurley saga. Yes. That, that's, see, that's the downside because we know that's coming up after this. Mm-hmm. But we I wonder can, if it's going to be not as bad as I'm remembering it because it's been a while since I've watched it. I think it is, but so I, haven't we'll, watched it. I haven't watched it recently either, so we'll see. I usually tend to – I've avoided a lot of those episodes, but – it's That's the thing. It's James is so dumb, but he's so sweet. <laughs> He's so and sweet, the problem but he's with so those episodes, dumb. yeah. 
the problem with this episode is right now there I can only take so much of sweet. Right. So, but we don't have to worry about that just yet. Not just yet. We have some time. No. Yeah, but, time. Um, but yeah, we basically um, this is the big uh, culmination of the storyline. The the f- Cooper finally figuring out who killed Laura and mm-hmm. confronting Leland. Confronting or, Bob. Confronting Bob. Yep. And um, a rather tragic end at the end of the episode. But, yep. but an amazing performance by Ray Wise. Amazing performance by Ray Wise. Amazing. amazing. How he's not having any for this, I have no idea. Yeah. But basically, this is the episode that should have got Ray Wise an Emmy. Hey, speaking of speaking of amazing, yeah, seriously, speaking of amazing, you know what? Who would have made a great relation to Lucy Moran? Who? Judy Greer. Yes. Judy Greer would be Absolutely. like fantastic. That's as perfect. Lucy Moran's sister. Yeah, they should. have Well, you know, they could maybe like her niece. They could have cast her as her niece. Something, yeah, that would have been great. That would you know, like maybe she was Gwen's kid. Oh yeah, something like that. Yeah, and um, yeah, she could have been. I mean, yep. Yeah. Hey, David Lynch, season four. Just saying. Come on, birthday boy. There's an idea for you right there. Stuff. You know, uh, Judy Greer would be perfect casting for that, yeah, especially if she kind of plays it as uh, like Charlene. <laughs> oh, Sherlyn. Or, or Sherlyn, yes, depending. Sherlyn. On, yep. Yeah, yeah, different. Yeah. Yep. Outlaw country. Outlaw Country, woo! First Lady of Outlaw Country or First Lady of this of this nation? <laughs> I'm actually both. So. Exactly. All right, we got to start the the Archer podcast. We should, because we kind of already do it. <laughs> exactly. It was like we'll, we'll just wrap it. up Ghost We will start talking about Archer. For yep, yep, that's the plan. Um, phrasing. Are we still doing that? Are we still doing phrasing? And we're still doing phrasing. <laughs> All right. But uh, so, yeah, big episode. And, and it's it just it. I love that the fact that it just happened to work out that uh, our fifth episode is going to be there's arbitrary law. This you know, no way we could have planned that. There, we did not plan that even in the slightest. No, what we're going to do after that, we kind of talked about, like, maybe we'll take a break from the um, the uh, kind of uh, commentary episodes. Yeah, we could do that. We were talking about doing like a, a deeper dive into stuff. Mm-hmm. Unless you want to like review some more David Lynch movies, or we haven't we done, do that, we haven't or... done we haven't done Dune yet. Oh boy, that's going to be a long episode, but a good one. It'll be good. It's going to yeah. be. You can't. That's 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 rife with stuff. It'd be super super good. Yeah. So I don't know. We'll figure but, out what do you we'll guys think, think. Yeah, exactly. Well, also in the meantime. Um, we'd love to hear your feedback on this upcoming episode next, you know, the arbitrary law, because especially if you've watched it before, you know, what's going to happen. You have to have some thoughts about this. So we'd love to have you share your thoughts with us. We'll read them. Uh, if you email us or post us on, you know, Facebook or what have you, Twitter, Mm -hmm. um, we'll read your comments here on the podcast because, this is a big one, and um, we'd love. I'd love personally. I would love to get your feedback on this. I would guys. too. Where can people email us, Charles? So obviously, if you want to do that, and we definitely recommend that you do because we want you to be a part of this podcast. Um, email us the email at the email, the email Ghostwood Podcast at gmail dot com. The Gmail Ghostwood. Oh, oh the Gmail. Oh, oh, the Gmail Ghostwood Podcast at gmail.com or you can reach us on the Twitter machine at ghostwoodcast that's a great perfectly acceptable substitute you can I am or just tweet at us or you can reach us on Facebook at ghostwood the Twin Peaks podcast because hey that's the name of our show so it made sense to do a Facebook page exactly the same way same name that's probably the least cryptic yeah exactly it, mm. it kind of made sense to us but uh, you can read Post us there, post uh, comments there, or message us there, um, because yeah, we'd love your feedback. I would, because I'd like to know what all of you guys think about this upcoming episode. What you thought, maybe the first time you watched it, and you were like, "Holy crap for crap!" Holy crap for crap! So, 
Yeah. So please share your thoughts with us and, uh, you know, I'll, I'll uh, kind of post this reminders, but uh, we'll be talking about that in a couple weeks. So if you hurry up after you, we get this episode posted, hopefully it'll be posted pretty quickly. Just saying. Yep. If not, I'll just, uh, you know, we'll try to get the word out as soon as possible. Definitely. But uh, we'd love that. So, uh, Zan, where can they reach you on the interwebs? Well, I am on the Instagrams and the Twitter machine. Yeah. As Udenax19. Uden- what about the Udenax. The Udenax. What about you, Charles? Uh, of course, I'm on the Twitters and the Instas at, at Charles Skaggs. Or you can reach me on Facebook, Charles Skaggs at Hilliard, Ohio, if you're so inclined. Or my blog at Geeky Things. Damn good coffee. And hot. Damn good coffee. And hot. We're talking about all the stuff we talk about here on Ghostwood. Uh, all kinds of comic books, sci-fi, and goodness. News about the other podcasts they do for Southgate Media Group, including... Take a deep breath. Next Stop Everywhere, the Doctor Who podcast they do with Jesse Jackson or Karen Lindsay. Or at the moment, because Jesse's kind of taking a break and Karen's not feeling well still. She's got a shredded throat. So I've been doing some filling hosts with that. Nice. A little rotating series of filling hosts. That's cool. Uh, been a lot of fun. We've been going back through classic and new who. And uh, yeah, yeah. We just did. Uh, we just recorded the William Hartnell classic, The Edge of Destruction. Nice. So we go well, all we, the way. We're going to all, all old school with that one. And then we're going to be talk- talking. We're going to be talking the Tom Baker classic, Genesis of the Daleks. Next. Oh, that one's that one is amazing. So yeah, so lots of good stuff coming yeah, up with that. To, you decide to, what was that? If no, you decide to do the uh, uh, Rise of the Autons with uh, John Pertwee, give me a call. Oh, Terror of the Autons, yeah. His first episode, yeah. Oh, you mean Spearhead from Space? I do mean Spearhead from Space. Well, yeah, we, well, we've already covered Spearhead from Space, but we haven't. All right, well, then you don't need to call me. It's a great episode, though. We really like that episode. I actually it's made Jeff, Jesse. Out of me to this day. I, I so made Jesse shit. a John Pertwee fan because of that episode. We, oh, so good. So it is one of my favorites, personally, because it's and it yeah. was a big influence on uh, Rose when Doctor Who came back in two thousand five. Yeah, why do you think the Doctor Who episode, the first Doctor Who episode of uh, the um, new series, yep. was Autons? Exactly. Because that would be why. That would be why. But, so, uh, oh, what but is there, this? Oh, what do I have here? Oh, you have the Genesis of the Daleks album. I do. See, you need to write in some feedback so we can read <laughs> it on the air. I should probably do that. Yeah, that would be awesome. Yeah. But, uh, or, you know, hey. Zan, now that you bring it up, if you want to like talk some Tom Baker or something, you could always oh come. Gosh. You could come on Next Stop Everywhere because I'm looking for filling hosts. How much time you got? <laughs> for you, I have all the time in the world. You could talk Tom Baker for, you know. Or to put it more accurately, <laughs> all of time and space, anywhere and everywhere, where do you yep. want to start? Where do you want to start? Victorian England with werewolves. <laughs> <laughs> but I'll just say, now that you bring it up, I'll extend that offer to you as well. All right. So, but uh, in addition to Next Stop Everywhere, there's, uh, you know, Titan Talk the Titans podcast that I do with Jesse. And I'm uh, going to be doing some fill-ins there as well because Jesse's kind of dialing things back because of his wife having some medical issues. Oh, that's terrible. Yeah. So he's kind of like, a, so it's kind of really fast. I do too. Um, but he's obviously wanting to spend more time with his wife, which is perfectly understandable. The problem is it's kind of left me in the lurch a little bit. Well, that's okay. So it's, and then, and then, and now I'm cool with that, but I just have to be more creative with the scheduling. So, okay. um, so we're going to be talking, um, young justice outsiders that's on the DC universe, uh, for an episode. Uh-huh. And then we're going to, and then hopefully Karen and I will be talking doom patrol. Nice. Which I can't wait. Yeah, you guys got a lot ju- to talk about this week, I mean, don't you? We got a sheriff. We got a lot to talk about. Yeah, DC Universe. You got a lot to talk about. Got a lot to talk about. So and uh, yeah, um, and then uh, hopefully if Karen can get back on track, we'll do the Phantom Zone podcast as well. Nice, because it's been forever in a dog's age that uh, we talked on that. But uh, hopefully we can relaunch that. Fingers crossed. Cool. 
So we'll see. But that's what's going on with me. Um, otherwise, uh, thank you for another fun discussion. I always have fun talking to you. Thank you, Charles. I had a great time talking and, to you. And I hope uh, hope I brighten your day a little bit. Yes, you did. Thank you very much. I tried In a very stressful hard. week. So yes, it has. You've had some uh, technical difficulties. Mm-hmm. Yeah. To put it mildly. To put it mildly. So. so. But I got my tomorrow scheduled out, and I should be able to get some things taken care of. So, but you got your spiffy new specs. I do. I got new sunglasses too, which I'm excited about. So, oh, very nice. Yeah, yeah with with the way that uh, you know, sometimes with the snows here and the the sun, it can be blinding. Blinding. Bright. Yes, even if it's gray Especially... outside, the sun, the, the the snow is like supernova. Exactly. It's, so everybody it's used to because the they're bigger than my old glasses. So I've, they're bigger than most than the glasses I've had in the last couple of glasses. So they go further down on my face, and I haven't had glasses like that since the eighties. Uh-huh. So it's it's so you have to get used to it get all used over to that again. again. Yeah, that's cool. So all but, right, but you'll get it. You'll get, get it figured it. out. It's only been a couple hours. Exactly. I would say they're fresh out of the box. You know, you got to give it a little bit of time. Yep. yep. All right. So everybody, come on back next week. Arbitrary Law, our big 50th Ghostwood episode. I can't believe you put up with me for 50 episodes. I can't believe you put up with me for that amount of time. Nope. No, that's not putting up with you at all. <laughs> and, uh, you know, even though, oh, I should mention it, tell everybody really quickly. Zan was kind enough to send me a gift in the mail. Oh, yeah. <laughs> and uh, I really appreciate it. She nothing big. She just sent me uh, this great magnet, which has officially made the fridge. Nice. So, yep, it is and, fridge uh, approved. Yep, I actually have a picture of it here. Aw, on my Insta, Instagram. So if you want to check it out, you can check it out. But uh, she says uh, I couldn't afford a therapist, so I decided, hey, why not start a podcast? I saw that. Which, pretty much, mm-hmm. yeah, that's pretty mm-hmm. much how it worked. Yep. Yeah, yeah, I saw that magnet in uh, Holy Craft here in Central Ohio on High Street. Holy Craft. Holy Craft. So uh, if you guys haven't been to Holy Craft, I highly recommend it. It is on High Street just north of North Broadway. And uh, it's amazing, handmade, good, small business. And they've got a little store cat who I love. Chunkers. Oh. Chunks. Chunky. Chunkers. Seems That's chunky. That's a cool name for a cat. It's a cool name for a cat. Yeah, so I bought, I had to, I got that for both of us. So I figured we needed those matching, uh, matching. Yeah, magnets. most. Oh, we have matching magnets. I didn't realize that. We yes, had I had magnets. to have one for myself too. Twinsies. Twinsies, totally. All right. Excellent. All right. Well, cool. Well, thank you again for the gift because it was a very nice surprise and it made you were, me smile. You are most welcome. I'm glad it made you smile. That was the intent. All right. So uh, everybody, come on back. Ghostwood five zero. Exactly. And we'll see you next time. Now I feel really exactly. Old. <laughs> it's gonna be good. It's gonna be awesome. And uh, and uh, yeah, send us your comments. Definitely want to hear them. So uh, we'll see you next time right here, Ghostwood, the Twin Peaks podcast. Out. Oh.